Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the weekly show with my good friend, Giraffe Neck Mark. How are we? We're doing good. You know, uh, a lot of stuff going on in baseball, so there's definitely a lot to talk about for sure. Lots. I mean, and not just baseball. I mean, in every, every professional sport, you know, right now, maybe not soccer. I don't know what they're doing in soccer. Yeah, but I'm not more sure. More of an either. international thing. Uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, let's dive right into it. We got – Protests happening, you know, protesting, obviously we have protests happening, you know, out in is Wisconsin, I believe is yeah. the state it's happening in um, Kenosha, I think is the, mm-hmm. the city. Uh, but let's stick to baseball and, and sports. I mean, obviously the NBA, they got a lot, of, you know, got a lot of people protesting the games in the sense that they're just not playing. Uh, we're boycotting the games. I don't even know what they're defining it as. Yeah. Um, but I th- did see, I think uh, the NBA, the players uh, voted to start this, the playoffs back up again. Is yeah, they're right? playing uh, today, which is Friday. I think is going to be their first game back in the playoffs. They've taken the last two days off. Okay. Um, and then Major League Baseball had a few games. I know Toronto and, and Boston um, suspended their game. Yep. I don't know how many other teams suspended their games. I think all the night games yesterday besides double headers were suspended. Okay. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, obviously a lot to talk about, a lot of emotion around this, this topic. Uh, we got, you know, our good friend, I, not good friend at all. I don't know. I don't plan <laughs> to ever know him. Um, so I don't, I want to make that clear before I say my good, I almost leave my good friend every time I talk <laughs> about anyone. Um, I'm like Stephen A. Smith, but Aubrey Huff. Yeah. I mean, he played in the Bay Leagues for how many, I don't know, it felt like forever. I think he had like a 14 year career or something like yeah, that. I mean, he was a good player. Really good yeah. player. Um, he had a solid career. Yeah. Now uh, has gone into the politic game a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. And he is about as as big of a Republican, as far right as you could possibly be, uh, like ever. Yeah, he he's like is. I mean, he said, um, "What's his face?" I don't remember the guy's exact name, but he said he was a national treasure. Oh yeah, Kyle Rittenhouse, the seventeen year old kid. Yeah, the kid that got you. Know, you started shooting people. Yeah, I don't even see how you can defend that. Yeah, I know. Like in the past, Aubrey Huff when he was getting a lot of like, uh, you know, slack about, you know, all the stuff he was saying. And I think it was when the giants told him he's not welcome back to the ring ceremony. He Correct. made a whole thing about how, um, you know, it's a joke. It's not serious. Uh, like if you think anything that he's saying is serious, like it, the jokes on you. And I'm like, you know, like jokes are meant to be funny and nothing that you say is particularly funny. So, um, it seems more of like a cover up that, you know, he kind of got caught with his pants down a little bit and he didn't know what to do. And he's just really leaning into it now and it's just such a bad look yeah it's almost like and i see this you happen this happens a lot i think it's happened with dave portnoy over at barcel sometimes and he's kind of backtracked on some things as well yeah. but you see this a lot where like they say something that's really not that bad and but they have they're so adamant about the backlash they get from it that they just go 10 times further yeah. with everything else they say and now we're at the point i mean we've been at the point this for a long time with aubrey huff but now we're at the point where you're you're just saying outlandish, horrible things, and there's no way you, there's no way a rational human being, and maybe Aubrey's not rational. Yeah. So that's always a possibility. But there's no way a rational human being is like, yeah, this is a great tweet. Let's let's say let's send this out. Yeah, it seems like he's intentionally trying to stir the pot for no reason other than him to get interactions and people to quote tweet him on Twitter and stuff like that, which like, I understand, you know, the impressions game, but there's ways to do it and there's ways not to. And it seems like, you know, inciting anger and, you know, just making some ridiculous statements that like you said, nobody who's really sane would ever say that's just like not the right way to go about it. No, it's not. It's not the right. And as a guy who's, you know, I, when I played, obviously I stayed away from politics and I think we even saw, um, Trevor Bauer, when those cleats, that cleat thing happened, he talked about the rules that in Major League Baseball put in place that you could wear whatever you wanted as long as it wasn't political or offensive. Yeah. So obviously, Major League Baseball, almost every sport, I mean, I guess the NBA is kind of trend, is trended away from it. Uh, but a lot of, you know, when I was coming up, that was a lot of things. You don't talk politics when you're, when you're playing because, one, you don't want to alienate fans. You always have fans on both sides of the, of the aisle. Yep. I mean, you're always going to. It's just a – you know, the old Michael Jordan quote, you know, Republicans buy shoes too, right? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's a business. It's that, I understand that thought process. Yep. That makes sense to me. I don't talk politics ever. Um, and there's a reason for it, you know, and not that any people would disagree with what I say, or what, I'm sure there would be, obviously. Um, yeah. There's never been any pol- political talk that everyone no. agrees with everything. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> but to just say things just to seemingly, like you said, stir the pot, 
um, it, it accomplishes nothing. Yeah. Like, especially when it's like such a, a heightened time of high emotion and everything that's going on in the country, you know, it's different when you tweet out something about the Yankees and then you start tweeting out about people's actual lives. That's when it really starts, you know, crossing the line. It does. And I think, you know, I've always been a guy that talks about, you know, one of the reasons I, I would never talk po- politics mainly because I'm not that educated on it. Um, and I refuse to talk about something I'm not educated on because it makes yeah. me sound like an idiot unless I'm, it's satire. It says I'm joking about it or like I'm messing around. Obviously nothing to be taken seriously. Yeah. Um, and these guys like Aubrey Huff and you know, yourself, myself, um, all these people have, have fairly large followings. And if you're talking to a person who might be uneducated, maybe a high school kid who hasn't quite you know, developed yet or anything mm-hmm. like that. And the same thing we have problems with our, with our president um, and Donald Trump, who I don't think it might, is that bad of a human being, but he tweets things yep. that now it, it's going to go on to an uneducated person and they're going to take it literally. Yep. And now we have, you know, Rittenhouse, whatever his name is now shooting people in, in, cause he thinks it's okay. He thinks his president thinks it's okay. Correct. And that's not how you run. You don't talk about these things unless you're fully educated on it and you can put it together a logical argument about it. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when like you're a little kid and you repeat what you hear your parents say, you exactly. know, like your parents start saying the F word and like you're four yeah. years old and you say it, you don't really know why, but you're like, oh, they're doing it. So it must be okay. Like, yeah, you would think people should be held to a higher standard, but also at the same time, we know that that's not how it is. So you are responsible for the things you say. They have consequences. No doubt. And that's why and I've been the same way on the other end too, when people are coming out for social justice and all of those things, which obviously we all want. Yeah. It's ridiculous yeah. not to want this. Um, but when you come out and talk about social justice, there's a lot of times some of these athletes go a little, in my opinion, a little too deep and Mm -hmm. you're showing that you're a little uneducated on the subject. And now you're saying things. And again, high school kids, you know, kids that are not educated are going to take that. And maybe you'll learn, maybe like, maybe we'll talk or like, you'll talk to someone else and like, Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I didn't think of that. You've now tweeted out to millions of people. And now you've put yourself in a position where now these people, now some people are going to go run with this. Yeah. And like, not take the full story. Yeah. I think of it like in my own like perspective of I've said things that are like, you know, I talk about baseball every day. So it's like way less important than what's going on right now. Of course. And I've heard people repeat what I say all the time. And I have such a small following compared to some of these athletes. So, mm-hmm. or, or even people, not even athletes, just in general. Um, so it's like people really do listen to what like people that they're following say that's why it's so important to be careful about what you do say exactly and be educated if for for influencers people that have these followings they have to be careful with what they're saying yeah because it's almost i always compare it to this when people don't understand what i'm talking about when i say that sometimes athletes should shut their mouths sometimes they should open their mouths Mm -hmm. you know depending on what it is but i always say would you take you know financial advice from you know i don't know some aubrey huff for example Well, you wouldn't, and you wouldn't yeah. even dream of it. Even no. the un- most uneducated people in the world wouldn't even dream of doing that because they know, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I take financial advice from this guy? He doesn't yep. play baseball. Well, the same token, you shouldn't be taking political advice from Aubrey Huff either. Correct. Because he's, he's very seemingly uneducated on the subject and just going to say anything to say anything. Yeah, just to get just to get those clicks, just to get, I mean, I think like the New York Post wrote an article about it. Like that's exactly what he wants. And it's, of course. it's bad. <laughs> it's, again, it, it, but it, it plays in. There's a guy on TikTok uh, not to get too off topic here, but there's a guy in Taylor. What's that guy? Nick Foster jokes. I don't yeah. know if you've seen him. I don't, I don't know if I have. Okay. So he's, he's very, he's very big. And he, he says some very, ooh, like, you know, questionable things. And he yeah. made one joke about rape. Okay. Um, and it was like this satire video. It was definitely a joke. Yeah. But it definitely, it, it pushed the, pushed the boundaries for sure. And I could see some people having best, especially having personal experiences with that being like, you know, fuck off, man. Yeah. Like, so I get that, but he talked about it on a podcast once talking about how like all you haters that come and talk and talk and talk and talk on my videos just pushes me out further and further and further. Yep. And you're, you're hurt. You're helping me way more than you'll ever hurt me. Yeah. Like truly the only way to like, I guess like stop Aubrey Huff stuff or like not play into his hand is like either block him or just like, if you can't, if you don't have the you know ability to ignore it. Yeah. block them so that you don't have to actually see it exactly and I, I put out a tweet yesterday is there a way to get politics off my twitter feed muted muted words <laughs> because listen, listen, i get there's a there I, I know it seems like a lot yeah. of work though but it, it it's i understand that these are these are these are topics that need to be talked about that need to be resolved we all need to come to common ground i will say for the i come from a family of police officers um and all new york city cops so like 
I, I, I also sympathize with, with police officers. I sympathize with, you know, the communities that are getting, you know, some police brutality as well. Yep. Like there's, I understand both sides of the aisle. Um, but, you know, I always said that, you know, no one's coming to Pat Light's Twitter to talk politics with me. Right. You know, they want yeah. to talk about, you know, my career, career ERA. Striking out my trout. Yeah, exactly. Well, they have to talk about that. I, man, <laughs> I mandate that when you come to my page. Um, but, you know, that's why they're there. And that's, I just treat it just like a TV, you know, a TV show. You know, yeah. uh, they're not coming, you know, if they want, they'll turn, turn over to Fox News or CNN for that. They don't, yeah. they don't, that's not why they're at my page. Yeah, I definitely um, that. And until I'm fully educated on it, I wouldn't speak on something anyway. Yeah. Um, but I digress. Last night, the Mets did something really cool. Dom, you know, had that pretty heartfelt uh, post-game press conference two yeah. nights ago now. Two nights ago, yeah. And now last night they had uh, that a pretty cool thing. You're a Mets guy. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, um, Dom's probably one of the more positive guys, super bubbly. Um, you almost never see him down. I mean, the dude essentially lost his starting job, starting role last year to Pete Alonzo, and he was one of the biggest supporters of Pete Alonzo, like just genuinely good teammate, happy guy. Um, and after the game, he had that press conference where he was super emotional. I mean, brought to tears, almost hysterically crying about what happened recently in Wisconsin. Um, which- Very emotional. Um, yeah, just to kind of see this, you know, continuously happen. So, um, I mean, Yeah, it was a long day for me, so <laughs> kind of wasn't there mentally, but we'll be all right. Next question comes from Tony DeComo. Hey, Dom, I, I guess just what was, you know, what has been the most difficult part about whether it's today or just even the past two months, what has been most difficult for you? Um, I mean, I think the most difficult part is to see, like, People still don't care. And for, for this, it just continuously happened. I mean, it just shows um, just the hate in people's heart. And, I mean, I mean, that, that just sucks, you know? And being a black man in America, it's, it's not easy. So, I mean... Like I said, you know, I, I just, I wasn't there today, but I'll, I'll bounce back. I'll be fine. Wisconsin, um, which was like super powerful. Cause I mean, you see someone who's bubbly like that all the time and really just be, that's just like genuinely being upset. Cause it's just like not right. What's happening. Um, you really feel it. I think like uh, it's just, it, it's different when you see that kind of stuff happen. Cause it really humanizes people. And a lot of times athletes don't get that kind of, you know, feeling or don't give off that kind of feeling that they're just like everybody else. Um, and obviously that had like, you know, big impact on what happened in baseball the rest of the day. A lot of teams were talking about what happened with Dom. I think even Reese Hoskins mentioned how, you know, like we play against these guys and you know them cause you know, you play them and all that kind of stuff. He goes, but that really put into perspective exactly how these people are feeling and how, you know, this is making an impact on their lives. Um, and, it it was, it was good. I mean, like, obviously you don't want to ever have to get to that scenario where someone's hysterically crying because of the stuff that's been going on. But I think it was really important that we saw that. Um, And then we saw that obviously play out with the Mets, you know, coming out into the field, 42 seconds of silence and then walking off um, and just postponing the game. It it was a big moment, I think in sports, one of those things where it's, you're definitely going to be talked about for a bit. Um, So that needed to be done. I think for sure it was, it's big. You know, people always talk about like what kind of impact is it going to make? I mean, think about all the little kids that are watching baseball and all of a sudden you see the guys do this. You go first question. I know if I was young, I'd be like, what's going on? Why are they doing this? And the parents have to now have that conversation where before that's probably something you're not talking about. So, you know, they ask about what kind of impact it's going to make right there. You're 
you know, little kids now are being involved. And when you're little, you don't see color. You don't see this or that. They'd be like, but why? And it's, it's just, it's all good steps forward, I think. And I think that is what they did last night was amazing. You know, yeah. with, with, again, with Dom crying like that, no matter if you agree or disagree with what happened in Kennesaw or whatever, have you, what have you, you know, I don't know how you would, you know, agree, but it would, I didn't laugh again at that, but whether you agree or disagree with the whole yeah. thing, if someone's draw that something's happening that's drawing that kind of an emotion out of someone, you have to realize that it, it's something that at least needs to be talked about. Yeah. And that's why I was really against, I don't know many people that were for it, but I was really against all the looting and all that stuff that were happening in these cities. Yeah. Because our generation, you know, we're getting old now. We're, we're set in our ways. We're, we're in the, who cares about us? Yeah. But you hate to see this looting and all this stuff happening because what we're trying to get accomplished is that next generation be better than us. Yeah. And sometimes you'll, these kids are super impressionable and if they're watching, they're watching the news, they see these looting. Now it's, it turned from, Oh, why are they protesting to I'm scared? Yeah. You know, and you don't want that to happen. You don't want, cause now all of a sudden you might make some racist kids now thinking cause they all, cause they turn on Fox news and all they see is black people looting. When yeah. it, first of all, it wasn't only, you know, black people. Yeah, looting. No. But you're only seeing these clips that this media wants to wants to show you, and now you're you're impressionable. You're learning, and you're saying, "Oh, wait a minute, I don't know. That's scary." Yeah. Um, and now we had something like that last night, where you see you know heartfelt Dom talk about it, and you see you know everyone stand together with the Mets and the 42 seconds of silence, which is unbelievable. Like yeah. such a great moment, and again, it makes conversations happen. People tune in for that Mets game, and now yep. those the parents have to talk about why they're they're walking off the field. Um, and there will inevitably be some conversations from parents that don't agree. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. But at least the conversation's happening and the kids can kind of talk about it and, and, and learn a little bit, which I think is the biggest impact these people have. Yeah. And, I mean, and that's what I think, you know, it's great. It's great for the sport. I think, you know, it's, it's again, everyone's talking about baseball right now. Yeah. Which I love. Yeah. It's you know? great. It's, when, it's, when baseball's in the news, you know, some, sometimes it's not great as we've seen with the steroid stuff in the past, you know, no, it could be a smudge, but right now, I mean, you almost have kind of forgotten about the Astros and the Red Sox whole cheating thing mm -hmm. because there's been so much other stuff going on. Not that they're not, you know, stuff to forget about, but there are bigger things and better things going on in baseball right now, which is good. No. Yeah. It's good. You see the community kind of come together and, and, and support each other, which yeah. I think is where, which I think again is huge. And what, what we're not, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, if you see if you see that type of emotion come out of someone, you, there's it, there, the conversation at the very least has to happen now. Exactly, and yeah. hopefully you know we make strides, um, strides in you know, in, in progressing and getting better in that in that respect. Um, but again, we digress. Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little baseball now. Yeah. Um, again, as as always, I never bring up my Red Sox because <laughs> that's a waste of time. Yeah, it's um, a little mess right now. Oh my god. It's outrageous. So we're gonna. I can't. When's the trade deadline? What's the actual date? August thirty first. So August thirty first. So we got three days. Yeah. Um. They'll probably just trade away everyone. Might as well at this point. <laughs> um. But and before we dive into your Mets, who are four and a half games back from yeah. Atlanta, Miami still up there, just hanging around. Just for you guys. Like that's well. That's good. Um. I want to quickly touch, as I always do, and as you tweeted at me during the week, uh, on the Dodgers run differential, which yes, is of now. Course plus 86 yeah that's just nuts like that's like you start talking plus 86 i think you look back at like the standings last year i think like most playoffs teams last year you know in 162 had like plus 40 plus 50 like plus 86 in what the 30 games that we played this far is they just played, sheer, they played 33 games yeah just like sheer and utter dominance which is what we expected from the dodgers i mean you look at that roster and you go how do they lose yeah. but the fact that they're actually doing it is still pretty crazy because we've both played baseball and obviously you had professional level. The best teams still don't win every game. They still only win about 60% of the time. The Dodgers are out there just killing guys. Like it's crazy. Winning 72% of the time and 73. And if you remember, I think it was like our second episode, which again, isn't that long ago in this baseball season. Yeah. They were behind uh, either San Diego or Colorado. I think they're behind both. Yeah, oh, and boy, now yeah. they have a five-game and a seven-game lead on both teams. Yeah, the Rockies really uh, Rockies, taking a yeah, little bit of a stumble. slide. Yeah, yeah the, the pitching has uh, fallen apart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's unfortunate. But eight plus eight six, and again, the, the, the closest team to them would be the Twins, I'm sure. 
Yeah. Actually, no. I'm Minnesota's plus 36. We now have a Chicago White Sox team in second place in that division at plus 41. And the Oakland Athletics coming in hot yes. right now at plus 41 as well. I don't know. Uh, did you see the tweet? It was like baseball references, World Series odds. Did you get a chance to look at that? I haven't seen it, no. So it gave, you know, the breakdown of every team in every league. So I was yeah. shocked to see that the Astros, according to Baseball Reference, still have the highest chance, in their opinion, to win the World Series in the American League. Really? Yep. The A's Miranda, were like, put that tweet up. The A's were like fifth, I think. Um, and I think the Yankees were even like third. I think it went like uh, Houston, Minnesota, and then I think the Yankees. Reference? Yeah, I think baseball reference. And then same thing with the National League. Dodgers were clear number one, but like the Mets were, I think, third or fourth. And I'm like, that's crazy. How are we coming up with these odds? Like, have we seen we got, these teams play? Yeah, we got – I'm seeing percentages here for the NL, but I haven't seen the odds yet. Here's the AL. A, wow, the Astros have a 14.1% chance to win. Yeah, by far the, the best chances in the AL. Yeah, which is shocking because the team, while they obviously still have the offensive pieces – their pitching is just not there this year. I mean, you know, shout out to local New Jersey kid, Brandon Bielak, who I played with, who's, you know, pitching for them right now. But shout out. Shout out. But, uh, I mean, that wasn't their plan at the beginning of the year to have him up there. So the arms that they have right now, besides what, Granky and McCullers, it's mm-hmm. a bit shaky. I don't know how you can really expect a team who's got really no pitching to go that far in the playoffs. No, honestly, I can't. I can't imagine. I mean, the AL is kind of a – Kind of a shit show right now. I mean, yeah. I, I thought the Yankees team that came out, I was like, well, this team's gonna be good. And eh? Yeah, I mean I, like, I'm not I'm not enthralled by them. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing uh Carabas tweeting out their record every time they lose. Of and course. you know, they're what under five hundred now against teams that are not the Boston Red Sox, which <laughs> yes. granted, you know, they've had some injuries, you know, judges of course. playing and stuff like that. But it is just funny to see again like how you can kind of spin the Yankees into like maybe they're not that good as we thought. I mean, it, it seemingly – I mean, the Rays are now only two and a half games up. Yeah. But they both have 11 losses, and the Rays got five more wins than they do. Yeah. Um, it's just I, – I'm not, I'm not as high on the Yankees as I was to start the year. When you pick the Rays to start off, I was like, Rays got a good team. He's right yeah. on that. But I was like, that Yankee team, oh, you know, I'm not sure they can, they can take it. Um, and now the Yankees are on a five-game losing streak. Um, the Rays are, win, are, you know, winning two in a row right now. I mean, it's just yeah. – I just I don't I don't see the Yankees winning the division anymore. No, I don't think, especially with like their pitching situation right now, like Paxton being hurt. Yeah. Um, they're and not getting. You say qu- in your in your prediction that you, the Yankees would win the division, but the Rays would take the wild card. No, I had the you Rays winning one. the division, okay. uh, Yankees with the wild card, um, and it was just because I was like, this Rays team is just so deep yeah. that if one guy goes down, another guy steps up, and like the way that they play matchups and everything, they're just such a smart, well-run organization yeah. that they almost can't fail with the guys that they have in place right now, especially that pitching. I um, mean, they haven't even really gotten good pitching out of glass now yet, you know, run wise. He's, he's still striking out like 16 batters per nine innings, which is just nuts <laughs> for a starting pitcher. Um, but like he has like a five ERA. So it's like, yeah. he's given up a ton of runs and they're still what 21 and 11, um, arguably the best team in baseball, you know, behind the Dodgers, they are scary good. And I, my whole thing with them was, I don't think that the Yankees are necessarily going to play poorly. It's just the Rays are going to be better. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing right now because yeah. um, the Yankees are still playing fine. It's just the Rays are better. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Yankees are a good team. Yeah. It's just, again, it's just, I mean, again, a course of injuries, but you know, that's what it comes, it comes, that's part of the package. Yep. Depth. You know, that's a huge part. You can't blame injuries for, for the way you can't blame injuries for the way you're losing, but you have, if you're going to blame injuries in other years, you got played, you just got blamed because your team sucks. Correct. Right? Injuries are part of part of the game. I know it well. <laughs> if, you, if, guy, if your guy is only as good as he can be on the field, if he's yeah. off the field, he's you know he might still be a great hitter, but he's off the field constantly. He's just not that. Good. He's not. He's not a premier guy because of the injuries. He's not making an impact. Exactly, and I think this Yankee team has has been injury prone for years now. Yeah, and it's hurting them once again with a team that they thought they had a, had a really good chance to win a World Series. I'm sure they still have a good chance to win a World Series. Yeah, definitely they come back and stay healthy. But it's just, again, it's not the team that I thought that they were going to be. Um, I guess it's kind of naive, though, because they have been injury-prone for how many years? I, I probably should have seen some of these injuries coming again. Yeah, I mean, I think it was definitely, like, you don't want to see it because Judge is one of the, you know, great players in the game right now. But I think you almost have to go to the, you know, point now where it's you got to expect some sort of significant time that he's going to miss every year because outside of his rookie season, I don't think he's played more than 120 games. Yeah. So, you know, you don't want to see the guy hit the IL because he's just, you know, a lot of fun to watch just by being on teams that we both, 
hate, yep. but it, it's that's something that happens. Stanton getting hurt. I mean, Glaber's the, Glaber's the new one, um, but he wasn't really even playing well this year. Well, I mean, Severino has been hurt all the time too, hasn't he? Severino, yep. Severino has had what like two actual healthy seasons with the Yankees, yeah. and when he's healthy, he's disgusting. Yeah, he's nuts. He's got what? crazy good stuff, but you know. Like you said, part of the game is being healthy. And if you have guys that aren't on the field, you're then going to your next best guy, which is going to hurt you. That's why they're your backup is because they're not as good as the guys playing in front of them. Exactly. Exactly. Now we'll talk about your Mets for a little while. I mean, how many teams make the, make the playoffs? Eight. Eight teams in each. each yeah. It, which is like, uh, it's almost going to help the Yankees too. They got helped by the late start and the fact that eight teams are going to make it. There's almost no way they don't make the playoffs. Yes. Um, so as long as they get healthy by the playoffs, they got, you know, they're right back in it, obviously. Of course. I'm trying to figure out here if the Mets, the Mets are not in the playoffs currently, although uh, close to it. <laughs> yeah, no, they are behind the Giants or they're technically like tied with the Giants, but because of winning percentage and less games played, they're behind yep. them. Um, and like, same thing with like St. Louis, Philadelphia, it's, all these teams and all these games missed are going to be real interesting coming down the stretch because, I mean, I know the Mets got like five games this weekend against the Yankees. So there's, there's just so much baseball to be played despite yeah. there only being 30 games left. Like it's a weird, it's a, it's a good time to play the Yankees though. Yes. It um, is. Who do you guys, who do you want the team to add at the trade deadline? If anyone, I, I don't think the Mets should make any moves. You know, there's been talks about like, Ooh, should we go get Clevenger? Is that like a Stroman type move where we have multiple years of control over him? Um, I think Clevenger is really good. I just don't want to give up the guys that I know we would have to. I've always been a guy who's – you always trade prospects for stars. That's always mm-hmm. been my motto. I'll stick to it. But right now, I don't think the Mets this year are in a spot to really make a push. So, yeah, you can push to make the playoffs, but our pitching is so weak right now, and we just for some reason cannot hit with runners in scoring position that I have little faith in the fact that we'll be able to put together a string where we can make a playoff run like that, especially now with eight teams and playing more games in the playoffs. Um, so I don't, I don't want, I want them to be quiet. If anything, like trade off guys that have expiring contracts. Um, if we could somehow dump Cano, I know he's playing well, let's, you know, get rid of him while we can maybe, but I think they're going to remain pretty quiet. Clevenger's I think the big prize and maybe even Bauer cause the Reds aren't playing well, but yeah. that's another team too. Like what do they do? Because they're not out of it but they're yep. not where they should be. So do you trade a guy like Bauer who's going to have immense value or do you still try to make that push? Well, I mean, Cincinnati's been playing that, that we're, we're building, building for out. It feels like, it feels like a decade now. Yeah. Um, and this was like, you know, they started making moves in the off season. And I was like, okay, they're, they're, they're making the moves now. It's yeah, time. I was, I was super high on them. I think I had them to win the division and I was like, and they had yeah, the easy schedule. Them. Yeah. And they had the easiest schedule in baseball too. So it was like, yeah, this and is the, a perfect the Cubs story. are running away with that division. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I think you're right. I don't think the Mets make any, make, I, I think there's going to be a lot of GMs that look at it exactly the way you did in the sense that, Hey, let's, let's go with what we have in a weird year. Yeah. And let's see if we can make noise, but and especially in a league in the national league that is so heavily dominated by really one or two teams. Yeah. Specifically the Dodgers. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, it's, you know, Dodgers are still the only team left in baseball with, with single digit losses. Uh, and, you know, they have, didn't have the, the easiest of starts. Like, you know, no. they've been crushing it for a long time now. Um, I, yeah, I don't think the Mets, I don't think the Mets have a realistic chance to win the World Series this year. Probably not. <laughs> uh, so I think, I think you're right. I think, do you guys have a great farm system or a good farm system? No. Um, our farm system is really, really young. So, like, the yeah. last two drafts, we've had really good drafts. Um, and we've gotten some really good international guys the last two years, but yeah. they're far away from being ready. Like our top catching prospects, like I think like 19 or 20 years old, okay. he was playing a ball last year. Uh, you know, Ronnie Mauricio, our shortstops, 19 or 20 years old. He was playing high a ball, double a ball. Okay. Um, these guys aren't, you know, close to being ready yet. Um, and this year definitely doesn't help the fact that there's no minor league baseball going on. So it's hard for them to really move, but that's like, the thing is like, they're far away, but they're close enough. So yeah. it's like the Mets are in that weird limbo and we've traded so many guys over the last few years. I mean, we got burned on Kalanick, obviously it's tough to continue to just deplete the farm system and not even see playoff appearances. Yeah. No, but that's the Mets way. Yes, it is. <laughs> if we're not getting better, we're also not getting worse. We love being third place. Yeah. You guys really never do come in last. No. I mean like, yeah, we, we have our years when I was younger, but like, you know, for the last like, five, six years, it's been like 
Third place. Yeah, you guys it's are historically mediocre. Yes, and that's, you know, classic well, Mets. Would you rather be the Red Sox? Well, I'm sure you would rather be the Mets as we won to Red Sox. We won to a World Series. Yeah, last exactly. Year. That's, what, that's what I say to all the Red Sox fans. The, yeah, the Red Sox <laughs> at the same time, you know, it's either first or last. Yeah. There I mean, really like, is no in between. You guys are pretty miserable to watch this year. So that would like really hurt me because I'd be like, man, like I, I'm turning on the TV and just like, how right, are you going to turn on the TV anymore? Yeah. How are you going to piss me off tonight? Which I'm getting very close to with the Mets. Yeah but they draw me back in the Mets at least. Cause then they'll put together a stretch where I'm like, there they are. Let's go. Like we're back. And then we go oh for 13 with runners in scoring position the next night. And I'm like, how is that even possible? How we can't even buy a hit. Like, hey, aren't you guys the worst in baseball with runners in scoring position? We have the most at bats with runners in scoring position and we have the worst average, but we have, <laughs> I think a couple of days ago, at least we had the highest average in baseball. We had the highest on base percentage in baseball and like the fifth highest OPS that's unheard of yeah, for how little runs we're scoring. It's like, you guys are really good until someone steps on second base and then you forget how to hit horrible people yeah interesting interesting well hey listen maybe it'll work i don't think it's gonna work out for you guys but uh you know maybe in a couple years it'll be better listen i right when the red Sox are getting good again yeah exactly that's we'll both get hot at the same time we'll meet each other in the world series 2022 yeah i would love (laughs) it Uh, we'll we'll get tickets yeah uh, let me tell you as long as we're able to go to games especially even next year as soon as we're allowed to go to games, I'm going. I'm, I'm oh, missing no. it. I've got such I mean, a match. I, 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 listen, I've been went to Boston last weekend. By the way, uh, got this little little number. Oh, nice Very for nice. the bar, not for my place. I don't hang that stuff in here, but um, <laughs> for the for the for the for the bar, that'll be nice. But uh, yeah, I'm you know I went up to Boston this week, this past weekend, and it was just like weird that I was there not going to a Sox game. Yeah. Um. It, it was very. I was there, and I was just kind of like walking around the city. Like, what do I do now? Yeah. I mean, like, even for me, part of the reason why I li- like moved to where I am, I'm like, I'm 10 minutes away from city field. I'm going to go to 50, 60 games this year. Like, Oh, oh Tuesday, one o'clock game. Yeah. I'll just go take an Uber over and go hang out for a little bit. And now it's like no baseball. It's, it's, it's a tough. Yeah. It's tough. Well, hopefully we get it this year. Uh, I'll not get it this year, but hopefully we get it next year. It seems as though hopefully we're trending in the right direction here. Yeah. Um, but we'll see with the winter coming. Uh, I feel like I feel like uh, Game of Thrones, the winter's coming, whatever. Yes. <laughs> uh, but anyway, guys, that's all we have for you today. Uh, thank you for tuning in, as always. Um, obviously, the the old rigmarole here. Follow Draft Neck Mark on YouTube, Twitter, all those good places. Uh, and then do the same with me. Keep tuning in, guys. And until next time, we'll see you later.